Hi everyone and thanks for stopping on to Pete's Garage. I took a survey on Facebook and asked if people would be interested in a video about oils, oil filters, and changing their own oil. And there was quite a bit of interest. So I'm going to go ahead and explain some things about oil, choosing oils, oil filters, and changing your own oils. And I'm going to start with viscosity. Oil is measured in something called viscosity. And viscosity is very simply a fluid's resistance to flow. Uh, the more viscous the material, the thicker the material is, like water. Water is very thin. You take uh, something like maple syrup. Maple syrup is very thick, so it's a more viscous material. The thicker it is, the more viscous the material. So we talk about the viscosity of motor oil. And the first thing we're going to talk about are single, single viscosity oils. And these are also known as SAE oils. SAE stands for the Society of Automotive Engineers and it's a standard that was developed for measuring oil viscosities and the flow rate of oils or how it's measured is by how fast it flows you take a known volume of water uh, or oil you put it through a orifice size a calculated orifice size and depending on how fast it flows through that orifice you get a measurement. It's usually measured in centipoise or centistoke, those kind of things, but centipoise is a standard measurement of flow for viscosity. Now, what happens with motor oil? Crude oil is pulled out of the ground and it's run through a refinery. After the oil is refined, it's tested to see what the viscosity of the oil is. There are additives put in there, and I'll talk about additives later, um, but right out of the ground, right through a refinery, Oil viscosity is measured at 100 degrees Celsius, which is also 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so the oil is measured at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. How the oil flows at that temperature determines its weight or viscosity. And let's say for sake of argument, once it was put through the test, it comes out to be a 30. Now, if it flows at 30, it'll be considered an SAE 30 oil. That means at 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to have a weight of 30. Straight 30 weight oil. It's a single SAE, single weight oil. Okay, single viscosity. Now, that's great, but if you were to put that in your car, it would be thick. When it's cold, it would thicken up. And when you start your car, it would have a hard time getting into the hard to reach places. It would be thick to flow and you'd have excessive wear in your engine. So what they do is they take an, a straight single viscosity oil and they turn it into a dual viscosity oil by putting in something called a pore point depressant. Okay. Now, what you're probably used to seeing is a measurement for oil that will be something like uh, it'll have a W here, and it might have a 5, okay? Let me make it a little darker so you can see it. And the biggest misconception here is that the W stands for weight. The W does not stand for weight, it stands for winter, okay? Now there are two different measurement charts they use for measuring oil. There's a regular SAE oil that's measured at regular temperatures for a single viscosity oil, and then there's a dual viscosity oil. So what they do is they take regular straight 30 weight SAE oil and they pour in something or they mix in something called a pour point depressant. Now what does that do? Regular crude oil has a wax in it, olefin wax is in it. And at cold temperatures this wax coagulates and thickens. So as the oil gets colder it thickens up and it's harder to pour, it becomes more viscous. The pour point desiccant that's put in there prevents these waxes from coagulating together and makes it thinner at colder temperatures, okay? So there's a separate chart called the winter grade chart, which W stands for winter. So what they do is they take the oil with this pour point depressant in it and they measure it at zero, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. They measure it at, the, at this temperature and at a lower temperature, the oil will flow like a five weight oil. So when you cold start your engine, the oil will be thinner and will reach all the hard to reach places faster 
so you don't have excessive wear. It's actually the, the similar to a five weight oil on a SAE chart flowing at the 100 degrees Celsius or 212. But it's a five weight oil. So they take this oil, they put in this four point depressant, measure it at zero degrees Celsius, uh, and it, it'll have a weight of five because it's got this uh, additive in it. Now, the interesting thing about it is on a regular chart, the regular SAE chart, if the viscosity is less than a 9.3, which is the thickness of the oil. If it's, it's less than a, a 9.3, at 100 degrees Celsius, it'll be a 30 weight oil. So this 30 weight oil will have a viscosity of less than 9.3 centistokes at 100 degrees Celsius, okay? When they put the pour point uh, desiccant in there, and it drops down to five, a five weight oil at minus 25 degrees Celsius will have a centipoise rate of roughly 3.8. So at 30 is going to be less than 9.3 and at 5 it's going to be around minus 25 degrees Celsius and that is going to be roughly 3.8 centistoke. Okay? So that's how it works. You've got a 30 weight oil, you put an additive in to prevent it from coagulating at low temperatures. Then you take that oil, you push it down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly 0, 0 degrees Celsius, you measure it. It's, now at, at uh, minus 25 degrees Celsius, a 3.8 centistoke oil is going to be roughly a 5 weight oil. So 5 weight oil in the winter is going to flow quicker than the 30 weight oil when it's hot. That's very simple. So we got a low temperature measurement for the oil. It'll flow at 5 weight cold which is comparable to a 5 SAE when it's at 212. Winter, so it's 5 in the winter, 30 weight when it's hot. So at 212 degrees it'll flow at like a 30 degrees or greater than a 9, uh, less than a 9.3 centistoke. That's how that works. The, the 5 winter 30. So it'll flow good in the, when it's cold and it'll thicken up when it's hot so that it doesn't lose viscosity and you maintain the lubricity of the oil throughout the engine. Well, now let's talk about the different types of oil you can buy. Okay, now let's talk about the kinds of oils you can buy. The three basic types, there's a conventional, synthetic, and synthetic blends. And what are the differences between the three? Conventional motor oil is the cheapest. This is the crude oil that's pulled out of the ground, goes through a refinery, and is delivered to you as either an SAE, single viscosity, or dual viscosity oil, 5W30, 10W30, whatever you buy. Conventional motor oil, since it comes out of the ground, has more sulfur in it, has more pollutants, so it, it's a, a hydrocarbon, it burns dirty, it puts a lot, out a lot more pollutants, so out of all the oils, it's the most dirty oil, okay? Synthetic. Synthetic oil is completely man-made, so it's roughly two to three times more expensive than, the, than a conventional oil. And since it's made in the lab, it can be made with more precision control, and a lot more additives are put in synthetic oils. One of the additives that are put in there are called PAOs. Those are polyalpha olefins. Those are special waxes that are put in the oil, and special uh, ingredients that are put into synthetic oils that help it perform good at high temperatures and at low temperatures. It improves the performance of the oil. It maintains a consistency. It doesn't break down when it gets hot or under high loads. So synthetic oil will perform much better than a regular conventional oil. It'll last a lot longer. However, if you choose to put a synthetic oil in your vehicle, you want to make sure the owner manual says that you can. Because if you have a problem with your vehicle, and that you take it back to the dealer wherever you got it and they find that you put a synthetic oil in there when you weren't supposed to they might void the warranty and won't cover any of the repairs. Last one is a synthetic blend. Now a synthetic blend is not a conventional oil and a synthetic oil mixed together to make a hybrid oil. That's not the way it works. A synthetic blend is basically it's basically a conventional oil. They take a conventional oil, they put a whole bunch of additives into it to bring up the performance of the conventional oil. It's a high performance conventional oil a little less expensive than the, th the synthetic, but you don't get the full benefit of a synthetic oil because it's a blend. It's a regular conventional oil with a whole bunch of additives put in it, and then it uh, improves the performance, but not as good as synthetic. So those are the three basic kinds you have, a conventional, a synthetic, and a synthetic blend. 
Now, let's talk about the purpose of motor oil and what motor oil is uh, supposed to do in your car and the five main purposes or five main functions of oil in your car. Okay, now, the five main purposes or the five main functions of oil in your engine are to cool, lubricate, clean, seal, and protect. And they're all pretty simple. Cool. Since oil is a viscous material, a thick material, as it goes through the cylinder heads, uh, the block, and it travels throughout the engine, it collects heat, it retains heat, drops in the oil pan, and it cools down. As oil blows across the oil pan, it cools it down, and it helps draw heat away from the engine. The second is to lubricate. Uh, the, the parts that are wearing together uh, need some sort of viscous barrier between the parts so they don't wear, and it's pretty simple. Oil lubricates. Clean. Now, as the oil goes through your engine, it picks up particles of wear. Small particles of iron, steel, graphite, whatever parts are wearing from the piston rings, the main bearings, bronze, whatever you have in the engine that's wearing are going to be collected in the oil, drop in the pan, and get pulled out through the filter. So the oil cleans your engine. Next is seal. Oil provides a viscous barrier between the piston and the cylinder wall, so you get good compression. Without oil in the engine, you would have no seal, or the seal would be very poor, and it would run rough. So oil provides a viscous barrier to give you compression in the engine. And finally, protect. There are uh, additives in the oil that help protect against uh, corrosion, uh, water, those kind of things that will build up inside the engine and, and cause parts to wear or rust. So there are uh, inhibitors in there that keep it from rusting. Very simple. So those are the five main functions of oil in your engine to cool, lubricate, clean, seal, and protect. Now, let me last for uh, finally talk about oil additives and what you can put into oil to help it perform better. Now let's talk about some oil additives or things you can put in your oil or that are put in your oil to help them perform better. The first of it is a viscosity index improver and that's quite simply something that's put in the oil to prevent the oil from breaking down as the temperature increases. Uh, detergents, now these aren't detergents like your household detergents, detergents meant to scrub. These are detergents that are put in the engine to help prevent uh, rust and corrosion and build up due to high temperature. There are dispersants. As your engine goes through, as the oil goes through the engine and, and picks up all of the particles of dirt uh, they would coagulate or they'd clump together and that's what forms the sludge in your engine. Dispersants in your engine are what keep those from clumping up and keep them going through the filter so you don't get clumps and, and uh, sludge build up in your engine. Sometimes a detergent and a dispersant will work together. It'll be a combination. It'll do both at the same time. But they can be purchased separately and done, uh, used separately. Anti-wear agents, these anti-wear agents are things like Slick 50 and those kind of things that you put in your engine. And again, if you do something like this, make sure your owner's manual won't be voided or your engine won't be voided if you put this kind of thing in your oil. But anti-wear agents are uh, something that's in an anti-wear agent, something called ZDDP. And this is a, a sulfur uh, kind of additive that's in there, stands for zinc dialkyl diphosphate. And this is a, like a sulfur compound that's put in to help prevent wear and increase the life of the engine as the uh, oil or the temperature of the oil increases. There are friction modifiers. Friction modifiers just help with impre uh, increase e efficiency in fuel economy. And, and the most, ingredient, uh, most common ingredient in, in the friction modifier will be graphite or molybdenum or molybdenum, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, we already talked about the pore point depressants. Pore point depressants help the oil perform thinner at zero degrees. Antioxidants. Antioxidants are put in your oil so when the oil temperatures or when the engine temperatures are pushed real high or a heavy load is put on them, uh, this prevents oxidation when the oil gets thicker. That's what those, those really do. It helps with pollution, emission controls, those kind of things. There's foam inhibitors. As the crankshaft is whipping around in the pan, it could foam up the oil, and if it foams up the oil, you get air in the oil and it becomes less effective, so you can put a foam inhibitor to reduce the foam in the oil pan. And finally, there are rust and corrosion inhibitors you can put in, and these are simply uh, additives you'd put in there if you, it's like putting dry gas in your gasoline. It, it's something that would uh, absorb moisture, prevent corrosion at high temperatures, and, and build up from uh, acids that are produced as the oil gets hot. Those are the basic uh, uh, 
additives that can be put in oil or are put in oil. Your, the oil you buy may have some or all of them in there depending on what you buy. But those are the kind of things that companies will put in oil to help them perform better. Now let's talk about oil filters. Now there are two basic kinds of oil filters. You have your standard canister type like this Fram Tough Guard. Uh, the only difference being this has got like a rough surface on the edge here so that when you're trying to pull it out you have something to grab on it's not slippery. This is a canister type filter and this is a, a new kind of filter that comes in a lot of new uh, kind of new vehicles. This is just a uh, insert filter or cartridge filter and all you replace you don't replace this whole thing all you're replacing is this canister part right here. Now uh, what are the difference and what should you look for? When you buy a standard filter like this, a canister filter, there's not really much inside. You got your O-ring on the top here and always follow the directions on the side that say whether or not to put oil on the O-ring or not. But one tip for you is if you go to change your oil filter and you pull the oil filter off and this O-ring is missing off the filter, it's still stuck up inside the block. So reach up in there, pull the O-ring off, because if you put an O-ring, or if you put a new oil filter over the O-ring, it's going to leak. You've got to pull that O-ring off. Make sure you have the O-ring off. Canister type filter is pretty easy to change. You just take this cap off, which is screwed in, screwed in like this. You open it up, you take it off, you pull off the canister, put the, new, or in the uh, insert here, the cartridge. You pull the, pull the cartridge off, put a new cartridge in, and you screw it in. It comes with a new O-ring to seal it down. And make sure you use the torque that's specified for this, and I'll show you why that's important in a, in a moment. But let's look inside these filters and find what's different between filters. I mean, should you buy a Fram? Should you buy uh, uh, AC Delco? Should you buy a Wix? What are the differences? So what I did here is I took a couple filters. Uh, I got to have a regular Fram, like you'd buy any auto store, and a Wix filter, and these are, these are the filters I use in high performance engines. Now, the Fram filter, again, the O-ring. If the O-ring is missing when you take your filter off, this O-ring is still stuck on the block, and you got to take that off. Reach up there and pull it right off, it'll come right off. Now, as I open up this Fram filter, you, got, you take it off the top like this, and you have just a rubber uh, distribution is this kind of a check valve so that the oil pressure goes in and oil, uh, oil goes in the outside and only comes through the outside. That just separates the oil coming in from the oil going out. So you got this uh, rubber uh, o-ring or this rubber check valve and then you have the canister part. And the canister part is basically, and it's burnt because I cut it with my plasma cutter to make the job quick, but you can see it's just a paper filter, much like the cartridge filter, same thing, same idea. Uh, it's, it's paper throughout except for a very, very thin metal, uh, thinner than a soup can. You can feel it, you can see it. Uh, and that's in there just to uh, provide holes so the oil can go through the filter. And then you have your paper filter. The advantage of this canister type filter, uh, and there's a uh, separator in the top here, and the bottom of the o-ring. This is just to keep the the um, cartridge off the bottom of the can or the, or the top of the can depending on how you want to look at it. Now the advantage to the this canister type filter or a traditional filter is that when you put it on you don't run the risk of damaging the filter media. Whether it's made out of paper, metal, wire mesh or whatever you don't run the risk of damaging it. So that's one of the advantages of these cartridge type filters. They're, they're simple, they're cheap, they're disposable, and if you use these, there's really nothing wrong with them. I mean, they're, they're fairly dependable. I've never had one fail, and if you change them on a regular basis, they're fine. But now let's look at a high-performance filter. Now, high-performance filter, this is a Wix filter, and when I take this off, of course, I have the O-ring like I did in the other one, very similar O-ring, but in this one, instead of a rubber uh, check valve in here, I have a, a neoprene, which is going to stand up to higher temperatures, it's going to last longer. So right off the bat, you got a better check valve right on top of the filter, right at the exit of the filter. Then you have this diffuser. The diffuser is really nice. Uh, this is not, you don't have one of these in the Fram filter, but this is a nice diffuser and this immediately separates the oil, drives oil one direction so that the oil doesn't have a chance of getting mixed in the filter. And I'll put that off to the side there. And then as I pull out the canister, or the filter media, this is a very big filter, and you can notice that it's metal throughout. So it's got a metal top on it, okay? 
it's got the metal on the inside and the metal on the inside which is very difficult to see try and get some light in there it is very thick it's a very nice heavy duty and it's kind of gun barreled you see how it's got that groove in there that helps the oil flow through the filter into the solid top so let me let me set this down for one second let me take this fram filter back apart I'll take this out and you can see the fram filter has got a hole straight through the top. It's blocked by that plug on the bottom there, but it's not a solid metal thing. You just got one little metal piece, paper media. This Wix filter, you got the metal on top. You got the paper media, but the paper is a lot heavier duty paper than it is in the, in the Fram filter. You got this nice metal bottom and it's a heavier metal on the inside. And on the top there's a spring just to hold the filter in place. It just kind of bounces in there. And it fits all back together just like this. So, is there a difference? I would say for high performance applications, yes, there is a difference. If you're going to have a high performance motor, you definitely want to use a good filter. There's no reason you shouldn't. And, and they're a little more expensive, but definitely worth it. Uh, you can see the if I put these back together, you can see the size difference between the Wix and the Fram. Of course, what this is for an eight cylinder, this is for a four cylinder. But still, regardless, it, uh, there's still differences on the inside components. So you pay more for a filter, you're going to get better components on the inside, last longer, better components to resist against heat uh, and resist against uh, oil spikes. So a little bit better filter. Now when you take these off, there's a couple different wrenches and a couple different sizes. You see I have a big one which would be for the width size filter and a smaller one that's for the Fram size filter. But these work pretty simple. Uh, this is actually upside down. So if I were going to take this filter off, I would put this around the bottom while it's in the engine. And as I turn it, you can see the strap grips it and I can turn the filter off. That's how those work. So oil filter wrenches are, are uh, essential if you have a hard time getting your filter off. And I'm willing to bet that when you go to take your filter off and if someone else put it on, you're going to have a real hard time getting it off because they cranked it on, they're pretty damn good, and you're going to fight to get it off. So pick yourself up an oil filter wrench. Uh, I have both sizes and there's a couple different ty kinds. There's actually a kind that's are shaped the size of the filter that are actually look like a, a grip like this and it grabs a filter, but those are specific to filter sizes. So those are the different types of filters, your canister, your uh, insert, or your cartridge filter, and that's what they look like on the inside. Now, let me talk a little bit about why you should change your own oil and things you should watch out for when you are changing your own oil. So if you're going to change your own oil, a couple simple tips. First of all, look underneath and see which side of the oil pan the plug is on. Is it on the passenger side, is it on the driver's side, or is it in the back? Jack up the engine, or jack up your car, so that if it's on the passenger side, jack it up on the driver's side so that the engine tilts towards the oil plug and all the oil will drain out of that plug, okay? And so wherever you are, in front, jack it up in front, on the other side, jack it up opposite so that all the oil will drain. Then, loosen the oil plug. It's going to be a 13 or 15 millimeter plug. They're pretty standard. Loosen it up, but when you take it out, don't hold it like this and loosen it up because when you do that, when it comes out, you're going to end up with an oil full of hand, uh, handful of oil. So loosen it this way and pull the plug out this way and the oil will shoot out and you won't have to worry about getting your hand soaked with oil. It's a mess. You Believe me, you want to try and do it, be it as delicate as you can. And you might want to push on the plug as you're turning it and until it's fully disengaged from the thread. You'll feel a click. You'll hear a click, click. Then you'll know it's fully disengaged. Take your finger away and slowly pull it out like that and all the oil will come out. Drain it into a pan and you're all set. Now, some oil plugs and oil pans will have a magnet on there. Look at the magnet. Look to see if you have a magnet. The purpose of that magnet is to collect ferrous items or metal that sit in the oil pan. So if you do have a magnet on there, clean off the magnet before you put the plug in. Okay. Now, while the oil is draining, you change the oil filter. You put the, the wrench in there, pull the filter off, look to make sure you didn't leave your uh, washer on your block, make sure it's on the filter, that's all removed. And remember, when you do break the filter, oil is going to come out, so you need to have a pan underneath that. And you want to do this when the engine's cool. If you do it when it's hot, you run the risk of burning your hands. Take off the oil fill plug on top of the engine and pull out the dipstick so air can get in there and the oil will drain free. And wait, be patient, let it all drain out until it starts to drip, okay? Now, why should you change your own oil? 
If you, when you change your own oil, if you buy oil from somewhere, any retailer that sells oil is required to take back the dirty oil. So, when you drain your oil, put it all back into the container, big container, small container, whatever it is, put it back in the containers that you bought it in, take it back to the store, and they have to take it back for recycling. And that's the key, recycling. Oil is sent to recycling centers. Oil is taken, it's put through filters, it's put through cleaners, detergents are added, and then it is sold as a recycled oil. And this recycled oil can end up in many different kinds of uh, businesses. It could end up using for uh, heat oil, it can be used up for farm equipment, there's a lot of different reasons it can be used, but there are some of the Jiffy Lube places or the smaller quick lube places that will buy refined oil because it's cheaper. It's not raw crude, it's just cleaned. So they buy it for 25 cents a quart versus 215 or 220 a quart. So they, there is a potential, I'm not saying it all happens, but there is a potential for Jeffy Lube or Quick Change Oil Places to buy 55 gallon drums of recycled oil and when you go to get your car changed or your oil changed at one of these facilities you're not getting fresh oil. So when you do that the reason I change my own oil is because I do not trust anybody to change my own. I want to pick the oil that's going in, I want to choose the filter that's going in, and I've heard horror stories where these places have not put the filter on all the way and the oil blew out. Uh, they put the filter on with the gasket still in or the o-ring still in the block and the oil blew all out. I even had a person tell me that they went for an oil change, they drained all the oil, put the filter back on, never put oil in the vehicle by the time they got home their engine was seized up and locked up all because they wanted to have an oil change for 1995 it's not worth it finally why you should change your own oil I bought a brand new car last summer and it has uh, has one of these cartridge type, type oil filters in there now this o-ring and this whole assembly is designed to go in with a specific torque okay now I took this back to the dealer the dealer that had ASC certified mechanics, mechanics that were certified to work on my vehicle by the manufacturer. Now, I went back for the free oil change, but I, I, I went against my better judgment. I said, okay, fine, let them do the first oil change for free. And again, I was disappointed at what happened. Let me show you what happened. Now, you look at this cartridge oil filter. It's paper, right? Okay, so it's not super strong. This is not steel. And since there's a torque rating on this, and this is rubber, you run a problem of over tightening this filter and let me show you what happened. I saved the filter. This I did the se a, a second oil change myself. This is the filter change that the dealer did by an ASC certified mechanic and a dealer certified to work on my vehicle. Now I want you to look at this. This is the cartridge right here and if you look at it very carefully you can see it's dented. And I don't know if I can get close enough where you can see all the way around it's dented. And how did that happen? That happened because as the mechanic put that in, they over torqued it and they started to turn the paper. They spun the paper hard enough. This is not, I can't do this by hand. I can start to do it, but they did it hard enough where they damaged this entire filter all the way around. Now, if that were to tear, I'd have filthy oil going through my engine and it could potentially wear it out very fast damaging. Luckily I changed this quickly and I saw that. This is a reason why I don't trust anybody to change my oil. Even a dealer, certified, ASC certified mechanic, certified by the company to change a filter and this is what they did. This is why I don't trust anybody to change my oil. I want to put the filter in myself. I want to torque it myself. I want to see what oil goes in there. I want to choose the oil that goes in there and I want to choose where it comes from. I want to choose the grade. I want to see the grade as it's going in. I want to make sure it's all the same. And something as simple as changing your oil could turn out to be a complete catastrophe if you're not there to watch them every step of the way. And usually when you go to a, a, a quick change oil place, you can't stand there and watch what they do. And I've heard more horror stories from it. So it's not worth the $19.95. You can buy a filter a Fram triple guard filter with a grip on it. You can buy a decent filter and five plus quarts of oil and do an oil change yourself for the same price. Get a better filter, make sure it's done right, and you're going to have a better quality oil. That's my opinion, but I'm showing you proof right here that when you let someone else change your oil, you never know what's going to happen. Oil is the lifeblood of an engine, and if you let someone else change it, you run the risk 
of having a catastrophic failure. I'd hate to see that happen to you, especially on a brand new vehicle, especially on a vehicle where you need to rely on for work and you can't afford to have it down while someone they change the engine because they made a mistake. To me, it's not totally not worth it. It takes 15 minutes to change your oil. Change your own oil and you'll be far better off. You'll be happier to do it yourself. You'll have some pride that you did it and you're much more secure knowing that what you put in there is proper, the job was done right, and you don't have to worry about driving halfway down the highway and having your oil filter start to leak and by the time you get to work, your engine's dead. My opinion, but that is why I do it. I hope this helped you out. I hope it make you understand or help you understand a little bit more about oil, oil viscosities, the purpose of oil, the different types of oil filters, what are inside of oil filters, is it worth spending a little more for a more expensive oil filter and get a better oil filter, and what can happen when you let other people change your oil. Okay? I hope that helps you. I appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you stopping by Pete's Garage. Good luck. And I appreciate all the comments. If there's something you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll be glad to make the video. Take care.